Hello YouTube. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the President Walker 2 AM CB radio. The President Walker 2 FCC is what I would call a full-featured CB radio. This has all of the features that the old school, larger, say Cobra 29s had. This is in a slightly smaller package. Overall dimensions are as follows. This is about six and five eighths inches in width, two and eighth inch tall, and approximately seven inches in depth. This is considered a DIN style uh, chassis. On the front panel here, we have a USB output connector. So you can charge uh, up your cell phone with this. You could uh, charge up a Bluetooth speaker, any kind of accessory that takes a USB port to charge them. This radio does not have to be on to charge. This USB port is live as long as this radio has power to it. So if you hook this up to say a constant fuse in your um, fuse block or directly to the battery, this will charge a device at all times. We have a six pin microphone connector that is pretty common on all of the president radios and the unit and bearcats. We have volume squelch control. Center knob here is volume. The outer ring is squelch. This also has the patented president ASC automatic squelch control. We have an RF output control that will dial this radio from approximately one to four watts. This radio is dead on at four watts RF output with approximately 85% modulation. Not bad for an out of the box radio. The next knob here we have is uh, RF gain and mic gain. The mic gain is in the center. The outer ring is the RF gain. The mic gain is a nice feature to have. If you are transmitting from a loud vehicle with loud, like a loud exhaust or a diesel or something like that, and uh, the people that are receiving your signal um, are getting too much of your background noise, you can actually turn this down to help eliminate the background noise and then uh, that will let your uh, voice come through a little bit clearer. I do like the RF gain on these radios. In fact, the RF gain is like, to me, one of the top features, one of the most important features that you have to have, especially if you're using this in a base station situation. Uh, if you have a lot of noise, you can back this RF gain down a little bit and it will cut down on some of your background noise and it'll improve your um, signal to noise ratio so you can hear the people that you're talking to uh, a little bit better. Also, if you are mobile and um, say in a convoy and the person right next to you is overloading your radio, you can actually take this RF gain, turn it down and eliminate that overload. Okay, over here we have a uh, rotary encoder channel selector. It's also a dual function uh, encoder. So you push on the encoder and that will allow us to toggle through the menus. I'll show you that in a minute. We have a uh, weather button. This, by turning this on, we can go into the weather channel mode. If you push and hold, you can toggle that. So the weather alert is on and off. As you can see, we have the weather alert on. So what we'll do is we'll go back to CB mode and then if there are any uh, weather uh, alerts being uh, transmitted, it will blank out whatever you're doing here on the CB and go into direct weather mode. Very nice feature, very nice feature. CB PA switch, pretty common on most all CB radios. We have an emergency one and two switch. This is an interesting switch. Back in the day, this would have been maybe like a channel nine and channel 19 switch. And out of the box, it comes that way. Um, I've actually set this for two channels that um, that I like to monitor every once in a while. So like channel one now or emergency one will be six. And then emergency two would be 19. And then of course, going and turning that off allows us front panel operation like so. Okay, the next one here is high cut, ANL, noise blanker and off. So what this will basically do is in the off position, the receiver's wide open. When we're in a situation where we have power line noise or maybe vehicle ignition noise or fuel pump noise, you would take the ANL and turn that on and it'll do a pretty good job of eliminating most of that noise. 
Also, it will go one step further and we can use our high cut. So this will leave a and and noise blanker on and then high cut. This will basically act as a tone control to take those upper audio frequencies and mellow them out a little bit. And, and in conjunction with noise blanker, that can help in any given situation. Okay, on the front here, we also have the talk back control. Pushing this will allow us to hear what our voice is sounding like going through uh, the bottom uh, firing speaker here. So it kind of lets you know if you're over modulated or if you have too much background noise, you can kind of keep tabs and get an idea of what you sound like. And of course we have Vox, Vox Operated Relay, where by enabling this, um, you can talk uh, into your microphone without pressing the PTT button. So one of the things I like about this radio is all of the important features right here are all on buttons, switches, and knobs. These are the most important features that you're gonna run into, okay? Now, for some other features, we're gonna do some menu-driven work here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take and push the menu. Push and hold it, I should say. All right, now we can go and change our colors. So if we don't like green, we push it again. We can go to blue, yellow, purple, and so on. Okay, and that'll just toggle back around. Well, let's change the color. Let's go to purple. So we like purple, we're gonna hit that button again. It lets us know that it, it gives us a confirmation beep. And after X amount of seconds, it will just revert back to normal. Or you can simply press the microphone real quick and it will go out of the, uh, the menu button here. Okay, let's push this again and hold it. Let's, let's do something else. We have the key beep. Now that's this beep that we're hearing, right? So maybe we don't want that. So let's push it again. Turn that to off, push it again, that is now gone. We have a Roger beep, which basically gives us a beeping sound every time we unkey the microphone. We have um, receive tone control. I really like this feature a lot. Let's see here, can I do this? Well, I'm out of there, okay. Pretty quiet out there tonight. Okay, let's go back to this. Okay, now here. Oh. Now this may be hard to hear on camera. This is our highest tone setting, so this will allow for a more sharper voice. If this is too much for you or too many, too much of a high frequency response, like a lot of our, you know, a lot of us have different hearing, right? And some of us can handle uh, high-pitched frequencies, some of us can't. So if you can't, then what I would do is push and hold that. I would dial that down. And of course we can even go below that and take out most of those high frequencies. Um, if you are in need of a little bit of high frequency because maybe you're hard of hearing up there, then of course you can turn that back on. And I really like this feature. It doesn't pick up so well here on my recording, on my microphone that I'm recording on, but um, it does work rather well. It's a very nice feature to have, especially in a mobile environment. And depending on where your radio is mounted, if your radio is mounted right up next to your ear, you might want to turn this tone down. If it's farther away from you, you might want to turn it up to get a little bit more um, volume in those higher frequencies. Okay, we've got our dimmer control. We'll push that again. And we can get pretty bright with this puppy or we can turn it off which is really nice I'm leaving it kind of low for the demonstration purposes so it doesn't wash out the camera okay here's our emergency one settings now this is really cool we're gonna leave this in the off position right but what we're gonna do is like say I wanted to change emergency one to uh, channel 9 I'll momentarily push that I'll go up to channel 9 I'll hit that We'll toggle over to emergency two, and let's put emergency two at, say, uh, 23, okay? We'll push that like that. 
And that's pretty much good to go. Let's back out of this feature here. I don't have the mic plugged in. Well, let's just wait for that to go off on its own. There we go. Now I'll go over here to emergency one. There's my channel nine. There's my channel 23. I love it. What a feature. Okay, I'm going to put this stuff back. Hit that again. I'm going to go down to emergency one. Push that again. I'm going to go back to six. Leave that like that. Now let's scroll through the rest of the menus. We have our SWR checker. Now I am on an antenna with an SWR of about a one to three. Now this is kind of an interesting setup. And as what I'm going to do is I actually plan on making another video on how to use this. Okay, so this says I'm about a one six. Um, I know that on a, on a meter though, I'm about a one to three. Okay, and what you do with that mode is um, the higher your SWR, the more time there is between each beep. And the closer you get to a perfect SWR, the beep gets faster. When you get to a one-to-one -one SWR, it'll just turn to a solid tone. It's a very interesting system. Can be uh, quite handy uh, out in the field if maybe you whack off a piece of your antenna or something. You want to just check and make sure you're being able to transmit safely. Or maybe something fell off and you found it. And you're going to put it back on and, and this will help get you at least pretty close to um, a good SWR until you can get a, a real meter on it. Okay, mic type. The radio comes with an Electra Element microphone and you have the, cho the choice of either using that or just a good old-fashioned dynamic mic. This is DY for dynamic. So. The microphone that comes with it is an Electret mic for EL. This is just a little microphone inside there, just a little tiny cartridge hidden right up in here. And it is powered with voltage from the radio. It's kind of like, um, you could kind of look at it as possibly a mini power mic, okay? Um, it's a very efficient way of uh, designing and utilizing a, a stock microphone. Maybe you want to use one of your uh, favorite power mics or something like that. Um, let me grab something here. Maybe you want to grab a power mic or something and wire, and you can wire this up to like six pins. And this, using this mic, this mic already has a battery inside of it. And the impedance wouldn't be right anyway, so what you would do is you would go and switch this function over to uh, dynamic. And then that style of microphone would work with it. Um, just a replacement style, like a coffin style mic. Everybody's seen these, right? These will work with this radio. So the radio is pretty, uh, pretty adaptable. You could uh, tune this thing into... Uh, sound pretty much any way you wanted. We have our PA setting and this PA function switch will allow us to uh, use an external PA speaker uh, only when we key the microphone or monitor the CB and uh, play that audio out through the PA speaker as well as being able to use it as a PA speaker uh, with the push to talk button. If you get messed up and you're not really happy with all of your settings, you can just reset the whole thing again. And this puts everything back to the way it was when it came out of the box. So your emergency one will be nine, emergency two will be 19. It comes in red. All of these other settings are basically uh, box stock. Now you can run the radio like this and just be done with it. Anyway, look, a lot of these modern radios are going menu driven like this. To me, 
The neat part about this is all the important stuff is right here on the front panel, so you don't have to fidget through menus while you're actually driving down the road. Very, very cool. Okay, let's take a look at the back of the unit. On the back of the radio, the first thing we notice is this big old heat sink right here. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, we have a really high quality Teflon um, SO239 coax connector. Really, really rugged. This is gonna last forever. Down here on the bottom, we have our power pin. I call these the old Uniden three pin uh, power connectors. This is a very common connector. You can get these at truck stops, CB radio stores, all over the place. Really nice to have. Uh, we have our external speaker. This is a 3.5 millimeter jack mono. We have our PA speaker output, 3.5 millimeter mono. We have a little uh, connector here uh, for uh, a little Vox microphone, like a sort of like a lapel style microphone. Let's take a look at the underneath. Okay, underneath the radio, we have approximately a three and a half inch speaker. This is a very nice uh, sounding speaker. And I'm really happy with the size of that. Uh, I don't like the little dinky speakers. They're a little too hard on my ears. And uh, they just don't really work all that well. Let's take a look at the insides of this puppy. Okay, here's an inside look. This is all new surface mount technology. These look a lot different than the old school CBs do. I'll tell you that. And these are going to be a lot less problematic, I believe, in the long run. Here's that nice large external speaker here, or internal speaker, I should say. Um, we have our coil components. Look at that. That's just a that's just a a, a, a beautiful sight, an absolutely beautiful sight. Okay. A um, couple things I like about this radio. On this particular model, uh, they really kicked it up a notch. There's a model, just one below this, without RF gain control, and that is the Taylor FCC. That's a really nice radio, but you bump up to the Walker, now you're getting, now you're kind of getting into a whole different thing here. One thing you're going to notice, at, first of all, this is all one piece aluminum. This is a one piece aluminum chassis and that heatsink on the back is molded into it. Yes, that's right. This is just absolutely awesome. I really like what they did with this. Okay, we'll go over here. First of all, this is, uh, this is the uh, AM regulator chip. It's basically a voltage regulator chip. These get pretty hot. When you're talking uh, for long periods of time, back and forth, back and forth, in most CB radios, these are just mounted to a, a, a metal part of the chassis, really thin metal. There's no other heat sinking or anything like this. And these can get extremely hot. These will actually get hotter than the final output transistor. This is what a lot of people worry about. But I like the fact that President spent some time on this and gave these uh, ICs here some more cooling this is really good. This is going to uh, make the lifespan of these components uh, quite a bit longer. I really like that. Um, it's just a single final unit. There's your RF uh, final, and it's just a it's just a really super super clean radio. Another cool thing about these is um, no more golden screwdrivers with these. Um, you know, everybody wants to get their CB radios tuned up, truck stop tunes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it just you know, in the wrong hands, work like that can uh, can really um, give you a distorted sounding radio. It's just not really a good way to go. What they do with these now is they use these uh, front panel um, menus here to get inside. And this has actually a special service mode where you press certain buttons at a certain time in a certain way. And I'll show you that in a later video. And that's how you turn up the modulation on this and make adjustments. No more of the tools in here and the guy getting in here with the screwdriver and making a mistake and uh, messing up your radio. By the way, remember that reset we had here where we reset all? If you did get in here and you turned your modulation up too high, it didn't match your microphone or you made some adjustment on here that just wasn't right, you can reset all that and put it back to box stock. So a lot of people don't like that, but I actually do. I think this is the way radios are going to be going 
from uh, from now on, and uh, I'm pretty excited about this technology, quite honestly. Okay, let's button her back up. My overall impression of the Walker 2 is this is a winner. This is a very nice AM citizens band radio. This is what I call my terminology street legal CB radio. Um, nothing illegal about it. Uh, 40 channels, uh, nothing crazy power wise or anything like that. Just a good, solid, reliable CB radio. I've been using it on uh, my base station and um, I really like the controls here. Um, it has a good sounding receiver. However, these uh, modern surface mount radios are not quite as quiet as the older CB radios. The older CB radios don't have quite as much white noise, but you get this in a mobile uh, setting and uh, you don't even notice any of that. I really like the, uh, the hot USB jack on that. That will help you charge your devices like your cell phones, maybe Bluetooth speakers, whatever. You could possibly, uh, you know, power this up and or uh, use this power outlet here for like a dash cam, temporary dash cam or something like that. Um, I like the six pin microphone connector that screw on so this will not pull out. Uh, again, RF gain is super, super important with me. Um, I really like to be able to uh, gain down uh, the background noise and just keep that signal to noise ratio up and uh, I really like that quite a bit. I like all of these selectable uh, main functions and I also really like being able to uh, choose your own emergency channels, program your own emergency channels. Those do not, do not go away by the way until you reset it or you set um, reset those channels. I like the uh, ANL noise blanker function on there. The talk back on the front here is pretty nice to have. Whether you you know if you if you whether you want to just hear yourself at all times or just use it momentarily to make sure that say maybe your microphone's working or if you're using an echo mic on here that you know you don't have too much echo or uh, somebody says you're scratchy you can hit the talk back and you can figure out uh, what's going on maybe your mic gains too high it's picking up too much background noise you know all of those so I really like that I also like the being able to change the uh, the colors as well. I think probably the thing that impresses me the most on this is how they have that one piece chassis that's just all aluminum. The whole back part of the radio uh, is a heat sink, so you're never gonna have to worry about this radio overheating. Oh, one last thing. This has a timeout timer, a TOT. Um, this will, uh, this radio, if. If you got the microphone stuck between your seats or something like that, or you're sitting on it, or, you know, things happen when you're driving, um, and you key this radio up, after three minutes, this will unkey, and it'll give you some alert tones. And if you hear those alert tones, maybe check. You might have a stuck microphone or something like that, and that saves you from burning this radio up. Now, I've cycled this through three times in a row, so that's a total of nine minutes and that heat sink and everything that they're using all around this radio is probably some of the most effective heat sinking that I've seen in a long time. So overall, in that $149 range, I think the Walker 2 is a lot of bang for your buck. Look for some more videos with this. I'm going to be uh, using this on some mobile setups. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how this uh, automatic uh, SWR checking system works on too. So please leave questions or comments down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And don't forget to hit the bell. Ring that bell so you can get all the updates on uh, this radio. All right. Thanks for watching.